Hey there boys and girls, Mega Drive Genesis fanatics. Uh, it's me Adrian again with another video and today I'm going to be doing a review and I'm going to be reviewing this item right here, the Sega Mega Drive Classic Game Console uh, by AT Games, commonly referred to as At Games. <clears throat> now, uh, I bought this today, I bought it from uh, Target yeah, see, here's the bag right here. Yeah, see, Target. Uh, it cost me $89. Um, now, that's a, a lot of money, I reckon, for something like this. Now, I've got my doubts about this thing, because I reviewed one of these a long time ago, when I first um, came to YouTube. Um... I don't know if it was 2009, 2010, or 2011. And I reviewed it with the Radica plug and play ones. Remember them? When they were doing the rounds? Yeah, well, I reviewed one of these a long time ago, and it wasn't, you know, the, the thing disappointed me so much. But it wasn't actually mine, the one I was reviewing in the video. Well, this one is. This, I bought it myself. But the one uh, I reviewed the first time was not mine. It was um, actually my father's. I just borrowed it so I could review it. And in that one, it had, you know, when I showcased some of the games like Shadow Dancer and Sonic and Knuckles, the, the sound emulation was just absolutely atrocious. It was terrible. Uh, the music was slow. Uh, it was out of pitch. Um, it was just dreadful. And it only had about 15 games built in. And from what I remember, the, the box was a lot smaller, it was more square shaped instead of rectangular. It was black and it advertised Sonic and Knuckles on the front. It had 15 built in games and it was it was uh, distributed by Blaze Europe. That's it, yeah. And it was a 2009 model, so and it had mono sound. It was a very early one. So here we are in 2018 and I bought one for the mainly so I just so I could review it <laughs> and um, so yeah um, we're gonna see how far at games has come in eight nine years since my last review we're gonna see if they have fixed the sound emulation the the sound issues uh, what caught my eye about this one I mean this is the later the latest model that they brought out is it advertises stereo sound now that's something new they never had stereo sound before and they seem to have done away with those crappy wireless controllers this one's this one comes with two wide controllers and the cartridge slot as we know and it's boasting 81 built-in games 81 not 80 so there's an extra game chucked in there somewhere and I'm assuming because I haven't I haven't tried this yet I just you know pulled it out of the bag just now I'm gonna Test it and review it, uh, try it as I as I, as I go along in the video, like most of us do. Uh, I'm assuming that out of the 81 games, um, 40 of them or 41 of them are the At Games unlicensed homebrew games. Now that's another reason that I bought actually bought this for, believe it or not. You you might find it laughable and think they're crap games, but some of them are actually pretty good and fun. And I'm actually trying to find some of them to, to download um, from the actual at game site so I can put them in my EverDrive. You know, the bin files. But I can't find them. I've only got one. I think it's the chess game. And chess is pretty good. So, uh, I'm sorry if it's not clear. Um, there's not a lot of light in here. Um, I've got the main light on in the lounge room here, and I've got the sun trying to come through. The sun, sunshine is coming through the window. So, um, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to just show. Uh, I'm going to pull it out of the box. Uh, I'm going to review and showcase uh, the peripherals and the the, the unit itself. Uh, we're going to have a look at the built-in games, and then on the back of the. Uh, box so I'll, I'll have a, we'll have a look at that and then we're, we're, I'm actually going to turn the system on I'm going to show you when I set up my other equipment what some of the games I like and 
yes I'm going to show you what the audio is like, the sound so you know nothing's going to be left out in this review um, I'm going to try and try my best to keep it as brief as I can but uh, knowing my history of reviewing things uh, they tend to take nearly an hour because I like to review a lot of things uh, I don't like to miss anything in the reviews so I'll try my best please bear with me um, sorry if it bores you but you know I'm not an expert at reviewing things but I try my best so just before I open it let's have a look at the back of this thing okay oh there's more games advertised on the side okay age 15 okay well not not all 81 are displayed on the back here it's only got a few um, so these are some of the games that are built into the the system um, interesting they give you Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat 3 because uh, they are third-party licensed games they're not actually developed or produced by Sega so that's nice to have them in there but I can't see Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3 on here I'm hoping that's in here because they're three games you, you'd you want to have in here uh, it's got Golden Axe 1, 2 and 3 um, one game that I always find strange that they always include is Super Thunderblade. Now that's not by any means a bad game, but it's not really one of the really, really good good ones either, you know? It's got very sluggish controls, it's a very difficult game. Uh, but why do they always put that in there? Why, why can't they put Outrun, Outrun in it, you know? They never include Outrun. Outrun was one of Sega's own games that they produced and published, well, why can't they put that in here? It would have been better than Super Thunder Blade, don't you think? Uh, so, yeah, well, every other game on the back here is a developed or and or published by Sega. Uh, Column 3, well, that's good to have that in there. So, alright, well, I'll stop it here and then we'll, um, I'll open it now and we'll have a look at what's inside shall we okay okay guys uh, I've just tried my best to open it up without wrecking the box uh, now one of the things I'm going to say right off the bat is it's got it's advertising the PAL Sega Mega Drive logo so one would assume we're getting get the PAL versions of all the games to me that's a good thing because that's what I want I don't want the Genesis versions. So, you know, we're going to find out. Uh, what have we got? We've got the instruction manual. What is in here? Hmm. Interesting. Well, it tells you about all the games. Every single game is listed in here. It tells you how to play them. Uh-huh. Interesting. It's got in basic instructions, how to plug it in, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> okay, we've got the unit itself, the console. I love that logo on it, Sega Mega Drive. That's what I want to see. Uh, at games, uh, we've got an on-off um, button and a menu button. <clears throat> Uh, we've got the controller ports for player one, player two. Well, what do we got on the back? Uh, the DC power supply to plug into the PowerPoint, and we got the composite video and left and right audio plugs. So this thing really does output stereo for once. Now that's that's interesting. That'll be good. Uh, even if the emulation, the sound emulation's crap, well at least they give you stereo sound. That's something. Um, we got the controllers here. Um, okay, these ones really are standard uh, because I think I remember from watching other reviews of this, the ones of these that had the wireless controllers. 
uh, with the infrared remote sensor, um, they had like a menu button above the start button where you could go straight into the game menu. You could leave any game at any time and go straight to the game menu. Um, but that's not on this. Um, it's hard to um, say uh, what the controller's like because I'm only touching it with one hand as I'm holding the camera up with the other. But the buttons feel okay. They seem to stick out a little bit too much, but you know, it's very similar to the original um, one, which I've got it over here. So as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the original Sega 6 button. Mega Drive controller and by the looks of things the cord length is not going to be very long either but that's okay because I've got extended extension cables for, for the for the cord of the controllers so that's that um, we got the power supply brick yep DC and uh, composite cables now a lot of you don't like composite video and composite audio, but I, I absolutely adore it. I love it. That's what I grew up with. And, you know, I know it's the standard. It's the standard now, and HDMI is the, of course, the HD, but I'm happy with it. I don't mind composite. I mean, yeah, it would be nice, I suppose, if they gave you the option so you could have HDMI, but, you know... What I don't like about the flashback one is it it only gives only supports HDMI. There's no composite outputs on the back. There should always be an option. I believe in having an option for everything. That goes for for you know when developers and publishers make games. You know they should always make not only a digital version for download, but a physical version. You know on a disc. You know it should always be the option. Once they, I don't agree with them, with companies and society and you know how they force you to move forward and they take away your things you know I don't like HDMI and there's not, got nothing against it but you know I got an old telly here you know this te television doesn't accept HDMI so I have to buy it I have to have a downscaler converter to convert composite to HDMI anyway so if I had an Xbox one or anything like that or a PS5 or a PS, PS6 or a Nintendo PowerPoint or whatever it's called, you know, I'd have to have the HDMI um, thing. I'd have to have that downscale, and I haven't got that. But, you know, anyway, I'm getting off topic, but yeah, well, that's what the unit looks like a squash can. They're just like the old one that I reviewed from eight, nine years ago. So I'm going to turn it on now. And we're going to see just what the emulation is like. I know it's an emulated product. I know there's no uh, real hardware innards inside of it. Um, it's got a cartridge slot, so you, yeah, like I mentioned, if I met, so like I mentioned before, you can play original game cartridges, so that's good. Uh, so when I find my remote, yes, to pause this video and start and be able to start it again at a different point. Okay, I'm going to hook it up now, I'm going to try it, and we're going to see what it's like. Okay guys, let's try the unit itself. <clears throat> We've got the At Games logo. I like how they advertise on the bottom um, about their site, where you can download more classic games. I like that. Okay, I don't like the sound of that beep. Can you hear that beep? Um, <clears throat> that's a bad sign. So we've got 81 games built in here. Um, I like how they give you Columns 3 because there was no PAL release of Columns 3. So that's a big yes. <clears throat> Golden Axe, Golden Axe 2, Golden Axe 3. They are must-haves. They're all classics. Jewel Master is another classic. See, Fantasy Star 2 and Fantasy Star 3, I... I'm not into RPGs, but I doubt this thing will even save. Um, I don't think it ha it supports SRAM backup battery on here. So even if I was into RPGs, I think Fantasy Star 2 and Fantasy Star 3 would be useless. Because it doesn't save. 
Um, we got Ristar, we got Shadow Dancer, Shinobi 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic Spinball, Sonic 1, Sonic 2. Now they could have left Sonic Spinball out and put Sonic 3 in there. I don't know why Sonic 3 is always missing from these things. We got the Ooze, we got Vector Man, but no Vector Man 2. Uh, Virtual Fighter 2. We got more RPGs, Shining Force, Shining Force 2. Super Thunderblade. <clears throat> then we got the homebrew unlicensed games by At Games, which is what I really bought it for. Right, we got Jewel Magic, uh, that's a Columns uh, clone. Uh, that's one of the games I bought it for. <coughs> and the other one was Mahjong Solitaire. Um, I wanted a, I wanted a game like that for my EverDrive, but I can't seem to find a good one. All I can find is Japanese ones that you can't understand what's going on. I got chess in my Mega EverDrive, this exact ROM. It's the only one that I ever found from an App Games unlicensed game that I've put into my EverDrive and can play on the real deal. We got Spider. Spider's another good one. Um, where the spiders come down and they land on the try and land on the cake, you've got to stop them from landing on the cake to get score points. Nice and simple. I don't mind that one. Uh, Mr. Balls, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, yeah, I think there's a frogger clone in here too somewhere. Whack a wolf. This would be interesting. Panic lift, I think that's the game where you're in the elevator and people get in and out and you've got to talk to them and you get involved in their lives or something like that. <clears throat> oh, interesting dinosaur puzzle. Oh, there's even more. Hide and seek. Wow, they put a lot in here. And last but not least, they give you Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, and Mortal Kombat 3. And you've even got an About section. Well, wow, let's check that out. Hmm, interesting. Alright, well let's try some games. Uh, we'll try some built-in games first, and then we'll try some cartridge games. Ah, uh, well... We're going to try this one first. This is the game everybody, the first game everybody always picks is always Sonic 1, and I'm no different from that, so I'll try Sonic 1. Let's see if the music is really terrible or not. Shall we? Okay, that chant sounded perfectly normal. The music is absolutely horrendous. It's terrible. The sound is completely bad. It's off completely. Completely off the mark. It's out of tune. But at least it's stereo. I just want to point out that the tempo is perfectly normal. That's how our original PAL version was released. It was released 17% slower in audio. Oh, and gameplay. So to make things worse, the PSG is pitched a lot higher than the FM. I mean, they're both out of sync, both out of, I mean, out of tune, but they don't even match being in a different pitch. Uh, the PSG is a few semitones too high and the FM's a few semitones too low. That's why it sounds awful.
So the tempo is normal and the pitch is not normal. <clears throat> God, does that sound bad? <laughs> okay. So Adon have, have had like they've had like nine years to, to try and get that sound emulation right and they still haven't got it right. Let's try Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 I'm curious to know if this uh, console uh, will check uh, if the ROM has been optimized in audio. You know because the one I reviewed like eight years ago it just played everything slow. It should check for 50 Hertz optimization. Is it going to be fast or is it going to be slow, the audio? Okay. The music is slow. Okay, this is not... This, does, this game does not represent a true power representation of what we originally had. It wasn't... The music was not this slow in our original power release. Now, I made a video about Sonic 2, the... 50 Hertz versus 60 Hertz, the real differences. You can watch that. I explained everything about it in that video. This console should be detecting that the music has been fixed. It's been optimized, but it's not doing that. It's just playing it at forced 50 Hertz. Does that sound bad? Why is this moving so fast? Look how quick the special sage is moving. I actually like it. Just turn that down a tad. Look how fast it is. It's like NTC, or maybe even faster. Well, anyway, let's move along. I don't want to spend too long on each game. Uh, so, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 was meant to have slow music in power format, but Sonic 2 was not meant to have slow music in power format. So, it's not checking. The, the, the checksum is not checking, or it's not kicking in. It's not checking whether the ROMs are 50 hertz optimized in visuals or audio. It's just running everything at forced 50 hertz it seems uh... what's another game i'll try one more built-in game um, let's try Mortal Kombat, the first one oh. so the music is slow in this too I mean, it, it, it's not checking for 50 hertz optimization. I mean, they're advertising it as a PAL Mega Drive with the, with the logo on it. I could have done the blood code then, but I forgot. Okay, uh, well, why don't we try? Uh, I'll just try one, um, one homebrew game. It was Jewel Magic, that's the one I wanted to try. Now, this one, this one's like columns. You've got to match the colors and you've got to match the, the way they're facing. You, you get all three and you, you clear the block and you get points. Nice and simple, I like it. See, like that.
Okay guys, let's try some cartridge games now <clears throat> to end to wrap things up. Uh, I just want to get uh, Sonic 3. I want to try Sonic 3. <clears throat> uh, I'll try Sonic 3D Flicky's Island first actually because I want to see if it says Blast or if it says Flicky's Island on the title screen. I bet you anything it says Blast, which will prove my theory all along that these are Genesis ROMs, or it's treating them as Genesis ROMs and being forced at 50 Hz. Playback. <coughs> the music's slow. Just as I suspected, it says blast. <coughs> so, our original PAL version should say Flicky's Island. It shouldn't say blast. The Genesis version says blast. So, it's treating my PAL cart like a Genesis version. like a 60 hertz game being forced to play at 50 hertz. I mean, I know the music sounds bad, but at least it sounds bad in stereo, not mono. Okay, now I'm going to try Sonic 3. Because I want to see if it plays it or not, because I've heard in reviews that the flashback version, which is the more expensive version of this, the one that's $150, doesn't play Sonic 3 at all. <clears throat> Let's see if it plays on here. Wow, the music's not slow. I wonder why. So the music's playing at normal, the normal tempo, and this is my power cart of Sonic 3. It's not the Genesis version. Hmm, I'm impressed with this. I mean, it sounds out of tune, but at least it's, at least it's playing it in the right tempo. Okay, let's try Sonic 3 and Knuckles, guys. I bet you anything that doesn't work. I've got my Sonic and Knuckles cart here, and a lock on Sonic 3 on the top. Bet it won't read it. It didn't. Um, what do I got? Black screen. Uh, so, let's just try that again. Uh, so it didn't work. Oh, so that doesn't surprise me. Sonic and Knuckles comes up, and the music's slow again. <coughs> Okay, so Sonic 3 and Knuckles doesn't work on here, guys. <clears throat> I'll just try one more time, eh? I'll take Sonic 3, put it back on. No second. I can tell by the black borders it's going to be Sonic and Knuckles. 
because Sonic 3 doesn't have those black borders. Mm. So they still won't still won't let you play Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So why won't they they should put that as one of the built-in games? Why isn't it one of the built-in games? <sighs> right, sorry guys, I'm just trying to put the cart, carts away. I don't want them all you know, I don't want everything left here all messy. Okay, let's try Streets of Rage 2. Let's see if that works and if it has slow music or not. Okay, why is it coming up in Japanese? <coughs> this is my PAL copy of the game. And it says Bare Knuckle 2. God, sounds like a nightmare. Nightmare coming true. Oh, the music is absolutely horrible, and it's slow. Okay. At least it worked. Uh, so let's try Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition. This is another region locked game like Sonic 3. So let's see if this one has slow music or not. Nope, the music tempo is perfectly normal. And this is my power card of Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition. impressed with this one. The music's not slow. Okay, so it seems the region lock, the region lock games seem to play perfectly fine, but the, the ones that use world ROMs, like Sonic 2 and Streets of Rage 2 and Sonic and & Knuckles and Sonic 3D, Freaky's Island, they all have suffer from slow music. Uh, you want to make a bet that Super Street Fighter 2 won't work? Let's try Super Street Fighter 2. And it doesn't work. Just get a red screen. Okay. But I knew that wouldn't work because the game is too large. It's a five megabyte game. And it didn't work on the at the the at games mega drive that I reviewed you know eight years ago. So that wouldn't would it, it doesn't surprise me that it wouldn't work on this one. Yeah. Okay, let's try a Genesis game. We've got a Genesis card here, and it's a region locked one, so I'm curious to know what this is going to be like. It's Back to the Future Part 3. It's the only Genesis game I own. It's an actual Sega Genesis card. It's got the Genesis logo on it. It's the only Genesis card I own that's got region locking in it. Okay, so the music is slow again but it plays slow on an original power mega drive if, if you if i play this cart on it because it's a region lock game and i'm forcing it to play in 50 hertz whoa why is this so fast 
This is way too fast. I don't remember it being this fast. When you jump, it's okay. God. God. What the hell was that? Bloody hell, that's not supposed to play that fast. Okay, uh, let's try the EverDrive. Uh, let's see if the Mega EverDrive Time 7 will work on this, eh? And it doesn't work. Well, that doesn't surprise me. So, Mega EverDrive, guys, does not work on this. So, don't get a NAT Games console thinking that your EverDrive cart is going to work on it. The menu didn't come up then. Too powerful for it. Uh, I want to try Outrun now. Let's see. I've got my Outrun cart. Let's see if this uh, has slow music or not. It's a world ROM, so it probably will. Get ready. Yep. The music is slow, guys. Okay, so <clears throat> there's a pattern forming here of which games are going to have slow music and which ones aren't. Um, okay, I just want to go back to the, the games that are built in. I want to try Shinobi 3. I saw it listed here. Now, is this one going to have slow music or is it going to have normal fast music? Interesting, it's one of the built-in games and it's got slow music. So obviously it's not the PAL version that's built into it, it's the Genesis version. And it's playing it back at force 50 hertz. Okay guys, I've got my Shinobi 3 PAL card here. I know I'm going to try it and we're going to see, and it's a region locked card. So it won't play in NTSE. So we're going to see if it has slow music or not. Okay, I'm putting the cart in now, turning it on. This is my PAL Shinobi 3 cart. And, just as I suspected, the music is at normal tempo. Because it's a region locked game. So, that's interesting. Okay, so if I'm going to play Shinobi 3, I'm best to play the cart version instead of the built-in one. That's a bit of a bummer, isn't it? Um, well, that's everything uh, that I wanted to review with the games. So, we'll just wrap this up and I'll give you my final score. And uh, on the, in the positives and the negatives of what I think. Shall we? Okay. Well, okay, I'm back to the camera mode. Um, so I just tried a handful of games and um, hang on a second. Okay, fixed. Uh, so I just tried a handful of games and um, I've worked out that the power carts that are region locked um, have no problems on here. They play at the correct speed, but if they're world ROMs, 
um, which is to say they don't have any region locking in them, um, this automatically plays them with slow music. So me thinks that this um, unit is behaving like a Japanese Mega Drive because Streets of Rage 2 came up as Bare Knuckle 2 um, so it's it's in Japanese mode so it's behaving like a Japanese Mega Drive but in 50 Hertz, forced 50 Hertz minus the the region locked uh, power carts that seem to, to run at normal speed um, so yeah well I still like the unit um, I don't want to be too negative about it because I, I am going to use it I'm going to um, I'm still going to use it I'm going to um, plug it in upstairs um, so maybe I can play some games before I go to bed um, I mean I've got to make a drive up there but I don't know this is just more snuggly it's got 81 games built into it and I, I, I like that that's what sucked me in it's got so many games built into it and it, it, it produces stereo sound now so that's good um, okay just quickly I'll just go through all the positives and the neg negatives and give it my final score <clears throat> um, the box yeah the box okay um, this is what I think guys um, the positives and the negatives yeah I wrote them down um, okay, first of all we'll go through the positives. This unit is good because it's got 81 built-in games. Yeah, you've got about 40 actual Sega Mega Drive Genesis games and then you've got about uh, 40 unlicensed homebrew games, but I think I'd still take that as a positive. Um, the composite video on the back is very good, very sharp, much sharper than the... the uh, original power mega drive that I got up here that's a lot lot um, blunter this is very sharp this is like a HDMI signal coming from composite video so that's a good thing uh, number three it can play cartridge games um, most of them not all of them I'm just putting a cartridge in there um, it's light it's compact you know it can fit easily on the shelf somewhere and it's got stereo sound so there's five positive points there. Now for the negatives. Um, okay. Still after eight, nine years of these being produced and manufactured, they still uh, haven't got the sound emulation right. So the sound is absolutely horrendous. It's horrible. It's out of tune. It's out of key. And to make things worse, the games that have PSG and FM sound even worse than games that just use FM because the PSG is... Um, the semitones are pitched way too high and the FM semitones are pitched way too low and that doesn't even match being in a different key so the sound is absolutely off uh, number two and the thing I despise about this unit the most is the checksum doesn't check for 50 Hertz optimization uh, in ROMs um, that's um, if if you that's only for the world ROMs though um, like I said, the, the region locked ones like Street Fighter and Shinobi 3 are fine. Um, so that's a bummer. I mean, Sonic 2 had slow music. Sonic and Knuckles had slow music. Uh, Sonic 3D had slow music. And it said Blast, which is wrong. It should have said Flicky's Island. I mean, they're, they're advertising it as a PAL unit. It's got our logo. It's not the Japanese Mega Drive logo. It's the PAL European Mega Drive logo, so you'd think it'd be power, it'd be, behave just like the original Power Mega Drive, but it doesn't. So there's no 50 hertz optimization unless you're using a power game, a power cart that's got region lock in it. Uh, what's another negative? Um, the cord length is a bit too short. Uh, as you can see here, it's very short, uh, but that's okay because I've got um, controller extension cables that I can use um, I didn't try it but I know straight off the bat I know it's not compatible with Sega Master System games um, so there's no there's no point in trying this I, I doubt this will even fit oh it actually fits on there but it covers the whole thing but I've got other ones of these anyway but 
I know it's not going to play Master System games, so there's no point in trying that. Um, what else is a negative? It's not compatible with all Mega Drive cartridges, as I've just shown. Uh, it doesn't play Super Street Fighter 2. It's still, after nine years, it still doesn't play Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So that's a big no-no. Uh, and it's not, obviously, it's not physically compatible with the Mega CD attachment or the 32X. So there's no surprise there. So, yeah, well, that's about it. Uh, my final score on this product, um, I would give it a 4.8 out of 10. Um, but the wife thinks it's a little bit better than that. She, she, what did you say your score was? Six. Six. The wife, the, the wife gives it a six because of the homebrew games. So that's my review. That's my full comprehensive review on this thing. Um, I don't regret buying it because I'm still going to use it. I, I mean, honestly, I, 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 the main reason I bought it was to so I could review it. I knew it, it I knew it had issues. So. You know, it wasn't something I was going to be really bummed about because I already knew. Uh, just the price tag, it should have been cheaper. It should have been maybe $49 instead of $89. And everything's, it doesn't surprise me, everything's expensive over here. So, that's it. You make up your mind what you think about it. Um, do you think it's worth getting? You know, I, my honest opinion, I'd stick with the real deal. The Mega Drive Model 1 or a Genesis Model 1. You can't go wrong with that. You know, preferably one that says, you know, high definition, high definition graphics, stereo sound along across the top. Though this is probably a VA, uh, it's either a VA4 or a VA5, because it doesn't have the TMSS3, uh, the TMSS, sorry, the license screen. It's TMSS3, that's what I meant to say. It doesn't have that, that little produced by or under license screen. So, you know, it's an earlier one. So that's my review guys, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, yeah the video went, went long again, but well that's everything. So, okay I'm going to stop it here, catch you later, bye now.